Okay. Bye. Okay, Friday. Okay. Uh, all that? Okay. Bye. Welcome <laughs> to another unauthorized ad run fuel treasure hunt in the sharky waters around the Gatsby Islands. We in Pirate Queen Ray. I'm your host, Captain Uravea, and today's guest is the great Gatsby staff engineer, Grayson Higgs. Hey, everybody. Hello. And today we're doing uh, work on your plugin, Grayson. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm. I'm excited. Um, this is a this is a, a plugin we've had for a while, and I probably touch it every like three four months. And then Benedicte was like, "Hey, I've got a great idea." So I'm I'm very grateful that y'all had this idea. Oh, look at Inessa giving us some 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 praise. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna make us all big again. I don't know. That's we look a little smushed, but I guess we'll just look a little smushed. Yeah. Um, yeah. I act. Yeah, I did that. I went in. I don't know what. Yeah, I was working on the Cloudinary um plugin because we've been working on the Cloudinary plugins for Cloudinary, and somebody was recommending your plugin as a way to kind of download Cloudinary files if you mm -hmm. wanted to go that way. Why? While we're working on the other way, where you just keep them on on Cloudinary, and I was like. I've heard about this plugin before. Like I, I know because I've seen it recommended all over the place. And then I went out and I, uh, I looked at it and I'm like, oh, this is the work we've been doing again and again. Like for our web scraping demo, for our YouTube demo, for our whatever. And I was like, why not? Like this is what the plugin ecosystem is for, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But so yeah. So yeah, it's it's called uh, Gatsby Plugin Remote Images, and I I just created it for exactly why you just said. I when Gatsby came out with Gatsby Image, it was so cool um, and and pretty unique at the time. And um, if the CMS you were using didn't like support Gatsby Image out of the box, or a lot of times I was doing like demos and I was pointing to this from like the, the you know like the Pokemon API or like mm -hmm. the the NASA API or whatever, where it just returns an image URL. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh man, that would be, that's cool. But like, it'd be nice if that were a Gatsby image. Um, and you just had to do the same pattern over and over and over. And I was like, oh, there's probably a way to abstract this a little bit and make it more generic and then let somebody reuse it without having to touch the Gatsby APIs themselves, which is like exactly what a plugin is for. So I'm glad people found not it useful. Because it's not that much code. It's just like really boring code. Because you're like, oh, there's a remote file. Let's create a remote file node for that. And then you just like do that for everything you're making. Yeah. And I also, because I wrote then, I wrote an email about this where I kind of talked about also that I see a lot of the CMSs do this work. But then people are like, but hey, I don't want to download. And then they have to add skip download local images. Mm -hmm. But if they just kind of deferred to your plugin, it would be just then it would be, OK, do not install this if you don't want to download the remote files instead of all of these plugins kind of having that code in their own plugin and then realizing that not everybody wants to download them. And yeah. And yeah. And then I think the main the main reason like it's more code than than it should be is to handle like edge cases and people mm -hmm. are like, oh, well, I want to. Um, be able to rename the file or I want to pass an array of images or like kind of like unique cases that I was like, okay, like that's cool. And then I think there's might be more tests than there is actual code, which is always good. <laughs> Somebody went through and wrote a bunch of tests, uh, which I appreciated, but, but yeah, it's a pretty, it's a pretty simple pattern. Um, but sometimes people <clears throat> aren't used to touching the Gatsby APIs themselves and they're just used to like, I need, I need a plugin. I need a plugin. I don't want mm -hmm. to, touch mm -hmm. you know on create node or you know all these the the internal apis mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of a an easy way for somebody to just jump right in yeah i like it um and also now that i am working on that you know cloudinary transformer plugin like that would be a case where you don't where you then don't use this so let's say you do have a cms and it returns um images and then you want to maybe upload those to cloudinary <laughs> instead or you're just getting the cloudinary url then you don't want to do the download, you know, locally. Then you want to use and put that Gatsby image resolver onto your Cloudinary nodes instead of, um, 
And then you have to go into your CMS and say, no, don't download it. Like, I want to do this thing instead. So, yeah, yeah. I like it when the plugins kind of work. You can take one out and put another one in and and it, you know, all works. I don't know. Yeah. And so and so now, you know, the image, the image CDN, which is why we're here, is kind of mm -hmm. like the, the next um, generation of, of Gatsby image where everything we've set up to this point works, but you know, people don't like that it adds to the build time. Mm -hmm. uh, even though it has a ton of benefits for your end user, it does it does add to your build time. And so um, the image CDN, of course, defers that until mm -hmm. until later. And so you reduce that impact on your build time. But it didn't work on this plugin. But yeah, and it's kind of like it's it's very much when you have a remote image and then you want to run that through this image CDN instead of downloading it locally. <laughs> then like this plugin is with the one you're reaching for. And that's why I was like, oh, there should be CDN support on this plugin because that's at least what we've been needing when we've been doing our work. Yeah. So I sure. guess we should just head on over to code. And as always, when we're stuck and things don't want to download or something like that, there will be some more chatting and getting to know Grayson. So if you have any questions for Grayson, put them in the chat, folks. And also remember to check out the description for links. And I guess that's it. So I'm going to look on over here. I am going to move you over a little bit. Unless I looks like I'm looking at the code. <laughs> and then look at that. Look, there's an email from me. <laughs> uh, uh, your plugin should support bo ooh, both Gatsby CDN and downloading images as local files because we did that to one of our plugins and now we're going to do it to yours. So that's going to be our little cheat sheet. Um, so basically, um, the how is that first we need to add some kind of uh, plugin option so that we can configure it, configure it to doing then CDN or download. But I think in your case, maybe it should be CDN and local. I don't know, like you can think about the naming there. No, I think that that makes sense. And then, because um, for this one, for our YouTube, like we also had none in case you didn't want to do anything with the with the URL, which would make sense, you know, if we were adding this sure. to a CMS or something. But in in the case of your plugin, like that, we're going to be one of one to work on these files. Right. Um, and then we need to make sure we create the correct um, node type. So if it's CDN, we need to create a node that uh, kind of adheres to this remote file interface. And then if not, we'll do the create remote file node, which you are doing already. Um, and then we need to add some schema customization. And for this plugin, what we really need to do is just kind of say that our uh, node type does have the interface remote file on it because that's what's going to add the resolvers that we need to for in Gatsby image CDN. And I guess that's it. So let's head on back up. So has it been a long time? Are you like 100% into your code? Have you been looking at it today? Yeah, I mean, luckily, it's like two two really big functions or something. It's not it's not too complex. I I think the most of the complexity has come from uh, certain options and customizations that people have asked mm -hmm. for. Um, you know, you might want to, let me look at some of the options here. So kind of the way we do want to use them, use the, use the plugin, I thought, because also what's nice with some, with guess with plugins is that you can use them several times over. So to mm -hmm. make this example, like I thought it would be cool if we could do, uh, cool. so I've added some remote image, example nodes that has an unsplash URL. Mm -hmm. And then we would want to add CDN image in CDN mode. And then we would add local image in local um, mode cool. so that we could we like do it twice. And then I've set up the example looks like this at the moment. So we have our local files where they're downloaded, but then we want to add this CDN option over here. Sure. And then I guess let's open. I always we love the graphical explorer here. Um, oh, yeah. And the... <laughs> but did um, you do the what? Did you do the what and why? I guess not. I just skipped those. I forgot our Tinkerbell tasks. Sorry. Good to have me on point. You here skipped right to the how. 
I skipped right. I just like even I had I even had like a, the what's and the why in my email from last time, and I was yeah, like, hey, yeah. let's give it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the developer for you. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so where's our Tinkerbell task? It's the what. So what? the what is that we will be letting the user decide if they want to use download the remote files to the local file system <laughs> as local files, or if they want to run them through the image Gatsby image CDN. Yeah. And then the why, I guess it's the same as the why when we did this to our demo plugin. And that is that um, it's, or as Grayson said, we defer, we can defer this work to the Gatsby CDN. And so we get faster build times if we have a ton of images. Yeah, um, that, that that's like the main why is, this reduced build times for it. Mm -hmm. sites with lots of images. Yeah. Yes. So that was the hack. Like like I it. guess the coolest thing about this is it this plugin is used for so many different sources. I mean, that's the whole mm -hmm. idea. You can use it um, to point at anything. Like you mentioned on Splash, I, I have a demo site where it, it searches on Splash, I think for foxes or something. And okay. It, uh, yeah. You know, it just returns 20 images of foxes and I use that to test it out. So mm -hmm. people have used this for like all kinds of things. So it will hopefully open up, uh, open, hopefully reduce build times for not just one type of CMS or like one type of plugin, but really, you know, hundreds. And again, like then the CMSs would need to add the CDN support themselves again. And like, yeah, sure. I, I don't think this is used very much for people using CMSs. I think it's I more... It's more for like you have a small part of your data coming from some mm -hmm. endpoint, mm -hmm. but it's still yeah. super useful because it, it sucks to have that one little chunk of data that doesn't have Gatsby images. So, mm -hmm. yeah, because I've seen some people like that you have like a Mongo, they source something from a MongoDB or yeah. they store mm -hmm. something or like you're sourcing from Unsplash, which obviously the, the, the files are remote since you're sourcing right. from Unsplash. But yeah, so there are, there's all these like little cases as well. But and I even do like, wanna... there's like legacy, there's like they could have like some legacy fields in a CMS that mm -hmm. are strings that are, mm -hmm. you know, paths to an image or something. There's mm -hmm. lots of, lots of cool use cases. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just keep on harping on like we've been looking at CMSs and like I see all of them now how we're like skip download local files and then it's like add ah, Gatsby CDN uh, yep. to all of them. And it's like, why do well anyway? I'm not gonna I'm gonna get off my soapbox and let's get back into the uh coding. So um so yes, the first step is to add this option. So we have an option to work with. Um and I think I saw that the plugin as is doesn't have a plugin schema. Um, yeah, for the op oh, with with like Joy. Um, yeah. No, I don't. I don't think it does. It maybe it probably should because it has a lot of options at this point. Mm -hmm. I think it has like ten options or something. Mm -hmm. um, let me see if it has a schema. Oh, should we do local as its default then? That's what people expect. So it's not a major upgrade. <laughs> so if they just keep on using the plugin, they still get right. the same kind of um, behavior. So I'm yep. going to add, I'm just going to call it mode. I mean, we can work on this naming later and CDN and local. <clears throat> and then let's do default local. Um, and then, of course, add all the other uh, options after a while. I have a great email about why you should always um, add the schema as well. But yeah. I think you worked on this plugin like way before the plugin option scheme. I was, was uh, yeah. available. I started this plugin four years ago. Yeah. At this point, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the next step then is to make sure that every place we use create remote file node, we uh, check to see our mode mode type and then um, create this like new new our own node that confirms to the remote file, um, the remote file interface, I guess. Right. Um, so let's create remote file. Let's figure out where that's used. So this is kind of interesting because we usually work on like demo things that we've created that are quite, you know, simple, but this is like a real case where we're actually working on like code <laughs> that yeah. is out there in the wild um, for the same. So this is the one that's called create no image nodes, which I think is used for arrays. So I was just going to say, let's skip down to the one 
that is like the straight up non edge case, which is just create image node. Um, yeah. And I'll, I'll, so for context for folks, that's again, a lot of the complexity in, in this plugin is from people wanting to do kind of special things. And so it started out where you would expect that field to just be a string, right? It's just mm -hmm. my picture dot JPEG. But then somebody was like, well, what if that field is an array of images and I want all of them to be Gatsby images. So <laughs> I had to figure that out. And then even what if it was nested, you know, deep down? Um, and then what if uh, I want to use a function to parse the URL out of a field? So there were lots of, <laughs> lots of things. So yeah, we can start with the simplest, which is if the field from your remote source is just a string, which is the path to the file. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I'll do an if mode. So I'm destructuring the mode from the options. And then I do if mode is CDN, then sure. we'll do the new stuff. So let's do a console log, do the new stuff. This is how I roll. Yep. <laughs> and then if not, let's keep on working with create and we'll create a local file node file node but i always this has confused me for a long time that create remote file node actually downloads a remote file as a local node like it's yeah uh yeah. it's there's something about the naming and i understand but it was like for people it's like, watching it's like, like create create remote file node locally <laughs> yes it's like download the remote file <laughs> and yeah. create a node so okay so let's do the new stuff so if i head on over to our demo site if we only do the cdn kind of the CDN path here, okay. then we should be able to see. Ah, time for questions. Yes, <laughs> head on. Let's so, do that. So did, did, did you just build the plugin before you started working at Gatsby? Yes. So I oh. started working at Gatsby um, about a year and a half ago. So I built this four years ago when I was probably working at an agency that was doing some Gatsby work and we had done this pattern like once or twice. And I was like, Oh, this is, this should just be a plugin to be cool if we publish this. So. Yeah. So did you, what, 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 what was the first thing you learned when you started building it that you can remember? That was the kind of new. Uh, it was one of my first introductions to like um, really like getting into the GraphQL schema and types. You know, I yeah. think when you first, and this is one of my favorite things about Gatsby is it's a, one of the best intros to GraphQL in, in my opinion, because you start out with just querying, you know, you learn how to query fields with Gatsby and your page queries. And honestly, that can get you there. Like most of the time you might not ever need to know anything else about GraphQL with Gatsby, but if you want to, there's like a whole world of, you know, full, full, full stack GraphQL, right? Um, and this is like, this was kind of like the next step for me. It was like, okay, I need to, cause you can have a lot of schema problems with this, right? You have to define the type correctly that it's a, that it's a file node. And um, that was just kind of like my first introduction. I, I don't even think I was doing any TypeScript four years ago. Um, and so like the idea of types is someone that primarily a JavaScript background. I was like, what are these for? You know? And so um, that was, of course, very interesting. You know, their types are pretty, pretty picky. Um, did you, did you get, did you like, did you like get somebody to help you? You know what I'm saying? Did oh yeah, for people? sure. So yeah. when I made this, actually, I was working with um, a guy named Ben Robertson, who is, he's actually my boss now. Uh, we were working at the same agency but now he runs the customer success department here at, at Gatsby. Oh. So our, our department, we handle like day-to-day -day support for people that use Gatsby cloud, but we also handle like the enterprise engagements. So if you're, um, you know, a, a large corporation and you want to build a Gatsby site or you want to um, improve your front end performance or improve your build speed or anything like that, like you can do a uh, consulting engagement with us. And so Ben and I, uh, and another guy, Zach Hawkins, we were working on, uh, and probably some others I'm, I'm forgetting, but we were working on uh, refactoring a site from, I think, Jekyll to use Gatsby. Um, and uh, that site is still on Gatsby. I think they just upgraded it to Gatsby 4. But uh, 
but we did this pattern with these images. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's when I was doing it, but I did not know. I did not do it alone. We kind of figured this pattern out because again, four years ago, this pattern was not as well known, um, which is why I felt like it needed a plugin and, and more documentation and kind of like an easier use case set up. So. so I've been doing some work while we've been chatting. So I managed to see that do, do the stuff was not happening and i kind of traversed up the code and figured that we needed to add mode um mode we had to destructure it from the plugin uh options let's see we had to destructure it from the plugin options and add it to this create image node options so i did that up here i destructured mode and then added it down there um okay. and then this I kind of know because I've spotted like a little bit of an error um, in the code. Mm -hmm. So here for file node, I know that you can await it, but I'm pretty sure that we can't await the create node thing. Um, we don't get anything back from the create node. So we have to like have the file. Uh, we need to have the node ID outside and then we can because mm -hmm. you're using file node ID down here. Um, and that works for uh, remote file or these, I mean, file nodes that are downloaded, but it doesn't right. work when we create nodes. So instead of then using file node to store that data, where is it? Sorry, I'm jumping up and down here. Let's do file node ID. And then I'll create a file node ID. And then here we'll do const file node equals Wait, create from file file node, and then that would be file node. I messed that up like several times because I didn't. And then file node. File so node is ID. this a change? Is this, this is directly related to the image CDN aspect? Not really. It's related to that. We we need we need this file node ID later on, um, mm -hmm. but we cannot like create node doesn't. Um, Oh, we can't await return. It, right? No, we can't wait, and it doesn't return anything. So gotcha. we need to, and then it's on options inside of this function. So I'm just like fixing that. So then we're getting the file node. We set the file node ID, and we need to do the same thing here where we do file. I'm not quite sure what this does, but let's make it work. Create file node, and then. We used the file node ID. And then if there's a file node ID, boom, boom, boom. There we go. But that will, because the file node ID will always be defined. So that might have to be like made better later. Because if we're actually looking here, like if there was a node being made, um, then like this will always be true now. No, it won't be true this will fail for this create remote we'll fix that later okay so yeah, I do know there is there is one really hacky thing going on um let's see well since wrap? it doesn't have to do anything with the cdn let's just like right. gloss over that for now but we cannot await or get anything from create node so that's why we need to create the file node id outside and then we use that when we're creating the node mm -hmm. Okay. So this this is great, but it's ha it, it was not actually part of our. No. How? It was not part of our how. I'm just gonna make these infos. So, so you 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 that. you just went off and. I went off on a tangent. I do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but we need so it didn't have a specifically to do with the CDN, but for kind of the pattern that's already in place to work because we need that file node ID later on for the okay. matching. We yeah. had to kind of pull it out. So because we're not getting a full node back, we're just getting that we just need a file node ID. Anyway, um, and as you might have seen here, because this we figured also figured out one time when we were working on something else, it's that um, this remote file interface we need to comply to need a height and a width and also a MIME type that we don't have with remote files. So we're going to change that later using like a probe 
a little bit of a probe function where we actually like look at the remote file. And this is something I think Gatsby should look into. But um, at of the moment, we need to provide the height, width, and the MIME type. And we don't know that when we just have the URL, right? So we need to figure right. that out later. But I'm just hard coding it as something sensible right now to keep mm -hmm. on going. Um, yep. So that's this step. And if I am thinking correctly, it should now be making remote image file nodes. Let's see. Oh, question time. Question time. <laughs> so um, uh, we were at um, uh, starting up building the plugin and then you've been, you've been working on it on and off. Mm -hmm. and, but do you feel that you're still learning from the work? You know what I'm saying? I yeah, I've probably spent more time on a on a different plugin um, lately. Honestly, the Gatsby plugin loadable components uh, SSR plugin. Um, if you're familiar with that one, because this one this one kind of got there was like one lingering bug that I solved probably like six months ago, or someone else solved, and I tested it and and merged it and, and released it. And since that, I I haven't really had any problems with this, which is normally what prompts me to work on something is if there's a, yeah. you know a problem uh and i think the last thing was was this question was y'all posed this question to me about a month ago before that the last issue was probably a year ago and i don't think it's even related to the plugin it's related to somebody's um <laughs> their remote their remote source you know timing out not the not the plugin timing out mm -hmm. um so yeah, I haven't worked. I haven't had to work on this much, which is a good thing, I think, because it kind of has been like doing its job. Um, and I think there might be like there's probably like some cleanup things um, that could happen to make it easier for someone to contribute or, or reason about the code. But the fact that you've been able to like jump in and uh, and get a lot of this work done for the image CDN without without having to like ask me is uh, pretty awesome. I mean, it makes me kind of happy because that's the sign that the code was decent <laughs> enough for somebody else, <laughs> somebody else to read and, uh, and, and contribute to. So, yeah. Okay. Let's yeah. see what we got in the uh, graphical Explorer. Now, if we have any, um, yeah, all remote image examples. Uh, no, that's the uh, node with the image, but we should be getting remote image files now. Or not. Have I reused my name? No, remote image file. It is creating them. Let's see. Create remote image example node. Create remote image file node, which is happening here. Oh, I'm like, my my logs are just bad. Created remote image file node. So if they should, shouldn't they come here now? Um, if you go to the Gatsby config, it should show you the type name. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Because these are the ones I'm making or okay. we're making. So here it is. We've created it with a height and a width and all of that. But we don't have any Gatsby image props on that. And that's because we haven't said that our remote image file does have the um, remote file interface on it, which is the one that adds the resolver we need. So, so adding, that, the, adding the type there alone doesn't do it, right? Yeah, because that's just the type that we came up with, like a node type I that see. we came up with. And then for the Gatsby image, um, Gatsby CDN support to be added, we need to add this interface remote file. So let's do that. So we're going to yes. need... And then that is in, this is me copy pasting. So we don't have, there we go. You can chat while I copy paste. Oh yeah. The reason why I asked about the learning thing is that I am exploring that now. Uh, I, I'm experimenting with plugins too. And I'm also exploring other people's work with plugins. And if they learn something interesting and, 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 and you kind of said, yes, they're first, mm -hmm. but then the kind of learning curve has gone a little bit down, but you, but you've been working on this other plugin, mm -hmm. and the, there you're, yeah, learning, that, or are you just working? 
uh, both. So I feel like the lear learning is uh, like correlated to the problem. So like as the problem starts to get solved, uh, you know, the, the learning starts to go down. Um, and so the loadable components plugin is, is kind of still an issue for people. Um, most people use that plugin uh, to solve one particular problem, which is to reduce their bundle size um, when they're importing, you know, a lot of components into a page that's dynamically choosing to render it. So if, what we call them flex pages. If you're in Contentful or something and you, an editor could choose any component on that page and you want to let them choose anything, then you have a corresponding React component that says, all right, if they chose a header, render the header component. If they chose a card, render the card component. You have to import all of those at the top of the file. And Webpack is typically import driven when it comes to bundling. So if it sees an import, it gets bundled. Sees the import, it gets bundled. It doesn't say like, did you render it? It says, did you import it? And so you have to use loadable components to say, um, to do basically a dynamic import. You can do dynamic imports with Webpack, but um, loadable components is a nice interface and it supports SSR. That's what this plugin does. Um, the interesting thing about it and why I'm still learning is because it's very tightly um, wound to the React ecosystems story on on code splitting and SSR because like the React docs, they point to loadable components for code splitting with SSR support. Um, but then you have this idea of like server components, you know, coming out in React 18 and um, React 18, you know, react.lazy should support SSR. So there's like several um, interesting things related to this that, that could be solutions um, down kind of down the road, um, but we don't have a, a perfect solution quite yet. And Ooh. that plugin touches Webpack. Uh, and <laughs> no, Webpack. Oh boy, that you lost me there. It touches yeah, Webpack. It, it's like, does this mean I don't have to touch Webpack? In that case, I, I mean, need to have have a, have a look at it. I mean, if you want to increase uh, like the the surface area of, of of knowledge for a problem, like just just throw Webpack into the mix, and you're going to make it a little bit more complicated. So. <laughs> Uh, but that's that's been fun to to learn, you know, some more about uh, compiling and bundling and how that stuff works under the hood, especially with Gatsby. So, but look at this Ooh. under the hood, Gatsby now added the Gatsby Image Resolver for us because we added the remote file interface on our remote yeah. image file type that we've uh, created, and that's there awesome. we have Gatsby Image and. It requires a width or a something. So let's do 300. And we should be seeing, boom, we got something there. Yeah. Awesome. And now, interestingly, is it now added to our node, like our node example? Because we were going to add it to, so we have our unsplash URL, but it doesn't have, and then, the, yeah, there's this um, CDN image. <laughs> but that looks like a file. That does not look like our remote image remote. file. Right. So we need to, um, we need to, I guess, customize. So you, cause you don't do this in the schema. You do this in your own resolvers, right? Adding kind of like merging saying like, take that URL and add it to this field. Right. That is done in create resolver. Correct. I think. Yeah. And then for the people listening or watching, like that's here, I give it the name cdn image mm -hmm. so take the unsplash url create a file or a remote file and then add that to the cdn image so let's see if we have some create resolvers here resolvers here create resolvers boom it says file so then but that's for the array we're skipping so if you see day. and if you here. see how like no type no type and name there are dynamic and that's where you can pass those in through those come in through the plugin options so yeah. right there yeah no type no type and name right so the user names those themselves yeah. i really like this pattern i've seen it more and more that instead of because a lot of the transformer plugins that was out there kind of just did it on mime type so it said like oh any markdown file i'm gonna do this or any um yeah any like one of those like internal kind of mm -hmm things while i really like it when you can define what node type you want to yeah. have because 
you know, when you're sourcing things from places, like that's what you know. And maybe you don't want to have it on all markdown files. Maybe you just want it yeah. on these nodes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this, one, of... this one is super specific. Um, you know, it, it's down to the field. Um, but yeah, because you can have you can have a lot of side effects if you're just taking every uh, every node of a certain type and doing something to it. Uh, that can be a lot of wasted time if that's not really what you need to do, you know. Yeah, I send that with the um, Cardinary plugin because it, it, for instance, it uploads all local files and it's uh, checked on only on the MIME type. And by doing that, it uploaded also all of the kind of, all of the create remote files, all of those remote files mm. that are created and downloaded yeah. into There's the cache. So yeah. yeah, so a lot of people were like, why is there now a cache folder in my Cloudinary account? Because it was taking everything that, was an image of uh, uh, any node that was an of that had like an image uh was of an image type mime type any of like gif or no i mean jpeg or png and stuff like that and uh, that was the check so all of those also got uploaded and and that wasn't what people were expecting they were just yeah. expecting you know their local files to be uploaded yeah um, so remote image file is the what we've called it um so if it's a mode cdn it's the other way around so if it's if it's uh, option mode CDN, we do we say that it's gonna return a node of the type remote image file, and if not, it's gonna be file. And what? Why is this an error? Oh, I do this all the time with the ter tertiary. I can't even mm -hmm. say the name tertiary. <laughs> Maybe you can say it in like proper English. Yeah, ternary. <laughs> um. There we go. And then yep. now we should be telling telling Gatsby that it should return um, the correct type. And we'll see if that happens. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Anyone in the chat has any questions? Otherwise, Ula, you have more questions, I think, of a more less <laughs> Gatsby angle. So, um, so I, uh, I I checked out your road trip on Instagram. Yes, back in uh, you and you went on a one hundred and two day road trip with your wife and your kid kids. Can I say their names? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, James, Joseph, John, Henry, and Rose. Rose yes. or Rosie? Rose, Rose. Rose yeah, yeah, yeah. Rose. And you were meeting family and friends and hiking and fishing and snake hunting. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So this it feels like forever ago, but yeah, I um I wasn't always in coding. You know, I uh I liked to code like in high school and stuff. I made websites and but then when it came time for college, I don't know. I I didn't think I was like smart enough or didn't want to get a CS degree, you know? And so I just kind of left coding behind and then kind of messed with it every once in a while. And then I graduated college during the, uh, the, the great recession, you know, 2009. And I just, uh, took the very first job that I could get, uh, which was in, in finance. It wasn't necessarily what I wanted to do. Um, and yeah, you know, after like five or so years of that, I think, one day my wife was just like, did you ever think you would work for a bank? And I was like, oh my God, no, <laughs> no I did not. What, a, what am I doing? Uh, and so, you know, we like kind of brainstormed of like, all right, well, what, what do I like yeah. to do and what, what am I good at and long-term career goals and prospects. And so I started uh, doing coding again at night and, um, used like all the online things, you know, like, uh, Use like Team Treehouse and uh, like West Boss and you know all those all those resources. I was just doing them at night, and then eventually felt confident enough to uh, to quit my job at the bank. And we sold our house and sold a lot of our stuff and got a travel trailer. And we yeah we drove around for it, it was like six months. Um, I think you said 102 days. I think it ended up being a lot. I think it was longer than that. I don't know if I stopped labeling the days or just stopped posting, but. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was quite a while, and I was like uh, reading books about JavaScript uh, with no internet because I didn't have internet to actually do like npm installs. But I was so I was just reading books about JavaScript. Uh, but 
uh, yeah, it all, it all worked out. And, you know, seven years later, uh, you know, here I am. So, yeah. but yeah, the road trip was cool. Western U S uh, we went from South Carolina to all the way to Wyoming and, and back again. And then we went up uh, the Blue Ridge mountains to, uh, to Pennsylvania uh, and then back down the Blue Ridge mountains. Uh, and then I, and then I got a job at a, uh, uh, at a, uh, an ed tech uh, startup. It was a really s- small place and they took a shot on, on hiring me, which was, which was awesome. Yeah. I have an error. Oh, I like that. Both our local image somewhere. Uh, the looks like both the local image. I think both the local image and the CDN image thinks that it's a, um, remote file thing so i think our options somewhere along the line the options are not create remote image file remote Im- okay so we're doing this twice so we should do one of these should be local so why is it i'm doing mode local mode cdn we are checking if mode equals equals cdn so why is it suddenly not creating these local files for us Oh, yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Can you say hi. Hi. My name is Ura. Hey. Will you come with me? Come, come. Come up, 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 up. Sit down, get tired. Vic. Can see, home. see hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm guessing that's John Henry. So this one, he was not on the road trip. He wasn't here yet, but now, oh. now he's here. This is Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello. Do you like being on TV? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do. I'll do, I'll do. You should get one of these. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Okay. My birthday is in a month. Your birthday is in a month? Yeah. How many years are you going to become? Five. Ooh. That's good. I remember when I was five. You know what we did? What? We, you know, we were in this place with all the kids. I don't know what you do. You call it kindergarten? No. Yeah. Daycare. Daycare, daycare. Yeah. And then the grown-ups, they were watching us, you know, but we had a plan. So two of the boys started a fight behind the house. And then all the grown-ups went by behind the house. And then we had this big uh, sticks. And we started to try to tip over the boat. There was a boat there for climbing. And we started to take it up. And we were putting rocks under. And we had it like almost tipping over when they came out and caught us. Yeah. Yeah, I was five. Yeah, those were the days. Thomas Thomas comes to check on me about every every hour or so to make sure I'm I'm working. Well, good, good. Are you working? No, I'm just kidding. Um, so I don't. I think I tested this earlier that I could do like mode local and mode uh, CDN together. Um, but it seems like now, like the mode is always CDN, even if even if I'm doing um, even if I'm doing this local one. Let's let's see if this. It's, just, it's weird. This is the thing with streams, like always something that. Stops yeah, I wonder working. if this could have to do with like local development and using the plugin mm-hmm. directory and looking at twice. Normally, when I test this plugin, I use npm link and have it mm. like. Um, but I think I've tested it with two different ones. No, but see, 
It still says CDN. So somewhere along the line, I've hard coded CDN because here we do mode oh. local. Yeah. So I think oh, that good. somewhere, let's see if we, um, if we, oh, look at that plugin mode option equal. Like this is what happens when you're stream. I set it to CDN. I didn't check if it was there CDN. <laughs> That is some bad code right hey, there. You caught that pretty quickly, though. That was kind of hidden. That could have that... been. That could have taken a lot longer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see now if we can make it work. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's amazing though what kind of stuff like happens when you're working. Um, like, the... oh, there we go. CDN, CDN, yeah. local, local. That is what we want. Yes, because then I think the demo is working. We just have a final thing to do: getting the height and width and stuff of the images before we uh so how long have you been at gatsby even though well i supposed to ask the question yeah like a, um like a year and a half so last oh. last january yeah so you're one of the new newer people then yeah i'd say i'm probably new newish newish yeah yeah i mean we've been you know gatsby gatsby cloud has been growing like crazy um mm -hmm. and so uh, like the team I'm on, the, the the customer success team, we've grown from two or three employees to like six or seven um, in the last year. And then lots of other teams have grown as well. So, um, but yeah, I feel like I've learned a lot in a year and a half. It's so you're like, on customer, so you help customers succeed, I guess, is customer success. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a mix of like everyday users. We don't, we, mm -hmm. The our team is not really meant for open source support. So like if it's if it's like, hey, how do I do this in Gatsby? You know, we point people to documentation or Stack Overflow or uh, or GitHub. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if it's a problem with Gatsby Cloud of like, hey, this builds locally, but it's not building on Gatsby Cloud, like that kind of bug. We help with those mm -hmm. um, for any user. But then we have, you know, larger customers that are saying, Hey, we're building a Gatsby site for the first time and we want to make sure we're doing it right. Um, can we consult with you and meet with you every week for six months and while we build this thing. And so I'll meet with them for, you know, an hour, hour or two a week, look at the code, talk about Gatsby, do performance testing, um, that kind of stuff as well. So that's always fun to like make sure a Gatsby site like is delivered and is like, you know, top notch because you hate when you see it built and, you know, like now it's so slow and it's like most performance problems with the Gatsby site are like uh, web fundamental problems with mm. performance, not really anything Gatsby specific. So that's always fun, kind of like teaching those things and and learning more about just, you know, browsers in general and performance optimizations and things like that. What would you say are like the top three things that people do? Well, actually, using Gatsby Image is just such a huge, huge performance win. Like, I, I'll, I'll hear so often people like, oh, well, yeah, it, it worked, but it made our build times long, so we stopped using it. And I'm like, no, no, no. We need to, like, we can work on the build times, but your end users and your Google ranking and, and your crux score is uh, super dependent on your images. Now, they may have some kind of, like, uh, you know, decent fallback, you know, like, a, yeah. like something like cloud in area or, um, you know, they have kind of a lot of times I'll see like their own image component, um, with like, Oh, this is image. It's just an image tag with like loading equals lazy. And I'm like, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not the same thing. Like, uh, this, <laughs> this component is, uh, is top notch. It's, it, it's the best that there is. And, and, and one of the best things is, you know, it, it builds these images ahead of time. So if you're mm -hmm. using something like, Next.js, Next.js has an image component, but it does it just in time, right? It mm. doesn't do it at build time. So it helps your build time, but it, it's it's worse for performance. So one of the number one things is use Gatsby image, um, especially with image CDN now, like you almost have no excuse not to use Gatsby image, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and like, and resources like this from you of like how to, how to implement it and make it work. You almost have no excuses anymore to not use Gatsby image. It's such a huge performance win. Um, besides that, um, you know, I would say just like general JavaScript bloat, you know, of mm -hmm. importing really, really big libraries or lots of libraries or, um, you know, things that aren't really necessary. There's probably cleaner ways to do it. Um, 
because that jacks up like the number of requests, it makes your app mm -hmm. on the little big. Mm -hmm. um, and then third thing would be this kind of not always a big one, but it's one I find super interesting is uh, uh, using SVGs as React components. Oh, don't, don't do that. Right. So you'll often see like import my SVG from, you know, mm -hmm. slash dot my dot SVG, right? Like uh, uh, it transforms an SVG file into React component. It feels oh, yeah, really, yeah. like no, it feels no, really good. I've done that. I've uh, done that. Like, yeah. and, for, and for smaller sites and when you're not using a lot of them, it's, it's okay. Right. It's, or for like fine. the logo. For right. For like one thing, it, it it's fine, but it's surprising how uh, bad that is for performance. Um, yeah. Because all, all that then gets bundled. It's all part of the JavaScript code. Correct. That becomes part of the bundle. Um, it typically makes the DOM size larger as well. And, and oh, that's, yeah. when, that's when compared to this other method, which mm -hmm. I'll say in a second, uh, it typically is like the largest DOM size possible, which hurts with like when you have a static site like Gatsby, um, one of the biggest penalties you pay in performance is, is React hydration. Right. Mm -hmm. So you often find we're spending time looking at that hydration and saying, how can we improve that? Everything else is pretty darn fast. Like, let's just improve hydration. So when you're hydrating an SVG that's part of JSX and it's been bundled and all that, that hydration time goes way up. So mm -hmm. uh, we recommend using an, uh, an SVG sprite, which is kind of like an old school technique, but uh, it's super, super fast. And there's some patterns you can use to make it really dynamic, but use SVG sprites. Um, for your SVGs, not, not the active <laughs> Okay, let's see. I was a little late in making all of us big, so we're going to be small again. Um, because uh, we, I or we, I fixed, well, um, so for, like we see here for the local and the CDN, you see that these are square. And that was because we hard coded the original width and height as a thousand pixels. So when Gatsby CDN kind of calculates the aspect ratio and like the different variants it's going to be making, it's going to use that original height and width. Um, so to do this, this actually I learned from Paul Scallion, Scal mm -hmm. Scanlon, Paul, OG um, yeah. navigator here at our show. He, yep. um, and I don't know if this is the best, but that's the one, um, use something called probe image size. So, I mean, you could just do like an Axios get and blah, 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 and do lots of stuff or like a regular fetch. But this one was pretty nice where you just give it a URL and you get the width, height, and the MIME type back, which we also need. Um, so I added that where we, um, oh, we need to wait that. Uh, we probe it, we get some metadata back, and we put that then on, oh, not the file name. Look at this. This is a good thing I'm reviewing my own code. Um, the MIME type and then the height and the width. And then I guess the file name for this one, I decided was just so the parent node. I ID. think the dot JPEG there, there is an option, a plugin option for extension type. If that's what uh, I, that is what I think it is. Oh yeah, it is. But since we have to ask for the height and width, I guess we can just like. Use oh, I one. see. Cause that'll just come from, yeah, got it. Yeah. But that could be like that could be an addition. So, but no, that wouldn't what make sense because the images would never be all the same size. Right. They might all be the same, but that. But it could be at the prepare URL function. Maybe it should be in that function where it like, you know, if it doesn't have a height. <laughs> but I put it here now, so we're um, awaiting the probe, and then we put the height and the width and the MIME type um, from that little probe. So that means we get like a we do a network request for every one of these images that are going to be um, be handled by Gatsby CDN. But that's, I mean, that's less work than like downloading all the images, sure. <laughs> which, would, which would have been the, you know, the, the other option. And we're also then deferring all of the image transformations. So, um, but I'm wondering, like, it could be interesting if Gatsby could like add, you know, add a way to figure this out them if it's not provided in the, um, in the remote file interface thing. But anyway, this is required at the moment. So let's run it again. I just wanted to show this site before I ran it with the the, the issue. Um, and then we can chat some more while we run it. And when that is done, we should be able to uh, wrap it up for today. Cool. Do you have any more questions, Ola? Yes. It's so <laughs> somebody is getting tired. I it's nighttime here. Night she's is crying. 
she's trying to build a paper dinosaur from a set and it's too hard. I can have that. Yeah. So and but you talking about reptiles. So you 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 <laughs> you went snake hunting. You went snake hunting and 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 was it it was it so that one of your boys was extra like interested in the snake things or what yeah. was it all yeah well i mean all 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 of them are um yeah in america we do have a lot of snakes um so i've seen just about every type of snake i mean just this year i mean we've probably caught six or seven and it's only been warm enough for like two or three months. Um, I don't really like like we don't. I don't really like snakes. Uh, I don't really like reptiles. It's just like my <laughs> my kids will my kids will find them all the time. Luckily, they've yeah. never found a venomous snake like unattended. We've seen lots of venomous snakes, but luckily, mm-hmm. it's always been with me. Um, yeah, they normally catch like garter garter snakes, uh, a snake called a ringneck. Um, they have seen like some big. They've caught like some black rat snakes. Uh, there's one called a uh, indigo racer in South Carolina that we saw. That's like the fastest snake. I think it's like the fastest snake in the world or something. Um, cool. Anyways, yeah, I have I do have one son that he's like we call him the critter king because he like I know I know lots of kids can catch animals, but I've never never seen anything like this. I mean, he he has brought home rabbits with his bare hands uh, at least three times. Which I, I mean, I've never even come close to catching a rabbit. Even if I had like a car, I couldn't catch a rabbit. Um, and so he he catches all kinds of uh, all kinds of cool animals. Now where we live, we're in Louisiana. Now there's uh, there's geckos that look like almost like translucent. Um, that's super cool. Lots of lots of frogs, um, toads, all that. So yeah. Constantly. Are they interested in like learning the names of them and stuff? Or oh yeah, um, you can get these guides from um, something called the Audubon Institute, and so uh, they have all of these field guides. You know that yeah. the first the first half is like all the pictures that are sorted by you know different. You go by like characteristic, and it rules it out, and then you get to the the family that you are, and then the back half of the book is all the details on the animals. So you find the picture. You get the page number. You go read the details about uh, about that creature. And we also we fish a lot. We, we as a family we like to fish, and so yeah. um, we, I guess the uh, next thing is learning to catch the fish with your bare hands, because then you would definitely have, never be hungry in your they family. Have <laughs> They've they done have, it. They have done it. <laughs> okay. He, uh, you he know, have, in, in the apocalyptic, we are coming. We're coming and staying with your boys, so we will have yeah. food. <laughs> well, they they have caught fish with their hand, which is a kind of a thing in America for for catfish in particular. But they've mm. caught um they've caught a number of fish with their bare hands. So. Catfish, they are like with the big pointy teeth. Yeah. So there's a there's a fishing technique for catfish called noodling, where you uh. Catfish like to live in holes down at the bottom of the body of water. So like in an old tree or like under a hollowed out riverbank or something, they, they like to hide in there. And so you stick your hand down and you wiggle your fingers like, like a worm or like noodles. And they, yeah. will, they will latch onto your hand and you, you clench and you pull the whole fish up. They will bite you? Yes. With their Do they have teeth? teeth? Or they, teeth? they have like lots and lots of little... Oh, little teeth, like like really, really rough sandpaper kind of feeling. Oh, okay. I think so, the thing you're thinking about is not teeth. It's more yeah, of not, a... It's, yeah, it's, those, are, those are like whiskers. Oh, okay. The teeth are pretty sharp, but they're not, uh, you know, it, it's more like really, really rough sandpaper. Yeah. So it's not barracuda-like. No, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but do they Look taste good? Look at what Inessa says. Yeah. But do they taste good or... Oh, catfish! Oh, very good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you fry it's you not... fry catfish. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can you kind of put them on a grill and? Normally, normally catfish are deep fried. Uh, I mean, deep, deep fried. fried. Oh. Yeah. Now we we catch trout um, as well. So trout and redfish. Um, there's a fish called a redfish. Those would be grilled, or in a stew. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, Norway should get on that deep frying some more fish. Like our fish preparation methods are either yucky or quite boring. 
Well, y'all do like y'all y'all do like pickled fish, right, or something like yes, that. Yes, pickled and like dried and and salted. salted and but the pickled one is is yeah. particularly unnice. Now, see where um, we are; it's too hot, <laughs> so you can't you can't really preserve uh, much of anything because it's so humid. Uh, it would mm -hmm. all spoil. So you have you could maybe smoke you could smoke meat, smoke, yeah. Smoke, but most of the time, fish you just put in a stew or or grill or fry. Mm -hmm, we should y'all should do a cooking stream. That would be cool too. Yeah. <laughs> but you but you all go fishing together. Everybody has like their rod. Oh yeah, I have like I have like twelve fishing poles. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have different ones for salt water, fresh water. You know, you often have them rigged up in a certain way where it's mm -hmm. kind of a pain to unrig it for the other type of way. So you'll have like a um, you know like a bass fishing rig just rod and reel like already set up to go um and then same for you know trout where you're using um you know shrimp or something to catch you know speckled trout that kind of thing so we yeah. should have more outdoor outdoors tech conferences we've been talking about that before with our friend yeah. in, in west of norway it was more of a business conference but I feel the same thing like a tech conference where you can like bring your kids and there'll be like lots of yeah. activities and then tech talks but also just like doing you know cool cool stuff inessa says <laughs> he first said that like gatsby kids live stream soon uh -huh. and then he's now saying like yes he'll be down for gatsby cooking live stream <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that'd be great uh yeah we're actually I'm, I'm seeing a bunch of family this week and we're all having to share meals and so we're we're responsible for two meals my family so we're cooking a big pot of uh we're doing all our cooking today. The big pot of jambalaya. If you've never had jambalaya, it's uh, it's delicious. Um, and then we're cooking a big pot of crawfish etouffee, which is um, I don't know if you've ever had crawfish um, or or a or any kind of etouffee, but it's kind of like a Louisiana specialty. Crawfish are like little they're like little little tiny lobsters. Oh, they're not, but they're not really lobsters. They live in they live in like fresh water. Oh, in they Memphis. have that in Sweden. In yeah, Sweden, yeah. they have both like ocean lobster, and then they have the the little the little. But a, a crawfish is like, mm. you know, a cut only like three or four inches long. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It's, but so yeah. you can you can buy their tails already peeled, and they kind of mm. look like shrimp, but they come yeah. with like a big, delicious chunk of fat <laughs> attached to the attached to the meat. But do they have claws? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They look, yeah, they have they they have claws. Oh. Hmm, that sounds good. Yeah, and it sounds good. So, are you from Louisiana originally, or no? My my mom's from Louisiana, and my wife is from Louisiana. Oh, and, okay. Uh, but I went to college in Louisiana, so mm. I grew up coming down here for holidays and stuff, and then for college, we moved away for a while uh, to the mountains of North Carolina, and we just moved back here like two weeks ago. So, the major two weeks ago. Yeah, the major upgrade here is the food. The food in Louisiana is uh, fantastic. So, and the fishing is better than in North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. We've never been down. Did you ever go south a lot? I've never been really I, to like the southern states. I went to Charleston and and I also went to Florida. Yeah, oh, Charles, yeah I've been to Florida. Charleston's nice. Yeah. I grew up I grew up near there. My dad's from near Charleston. That's where that's where my dad lives now. Charleston's a nice a nice cool city. Yeah. New Orleans is New Orleans is uh like a, a dirtier, more fun Charleston. So <laughs> Charleston's very clean and like kind of buttoned up and pristine. And New Orleans is a little rougher around the edges, but still really beautiful and uh, and a little more fun, I think, than than Charleston. Cool. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah we but should otherwise, go. Otherwise, the south, the southern U.S. is very spread out, and we mm. don't have good public transportation. So if you come, yeah. it's it's very difficult. I mean, relatively difficult to to see a, a big area because you yeah. know, it's twelve. It's a twelve hour drive from mm. where we just moved from. Yeah. You know, uh, I I took the northern corridor by train once, and I think there is a southern corridor that is still in operation. Like a, you go down a little bit on the east coast, and then you can actually cross some of the southern states with the train. Hmm. I always kind of wanted to do that, um, but I am thinking it might. I don't know how long to say like the, the there still be you know commercial. Per, I, I think per it's like twenty four hours. I think that train is yeah. like twenty four hours to do what we did in twelve hour drive would be about twenty four yeah. hours yeah. On, yeah. on the train. 
that was probably yeah that was kind of what the uh the northern one was but we jumped off like several times um across like it was me me and my mother who did that a couple of years back and um it was really nice because you got to see kind of like old america because they mm -hmm. um that's where you know the highways weren't there you get mm -hmm. to see at least in the northern corridor that's not where they put the highways so you got to see a lot of kind of the northern um states from kind of not a car vantage point and like the old, like a lot of old industry we drove past yeah. and um it was pretty cool it was pretty in a national park yeah that was nice i like yeah. trains yeah, <laughs> but, yeah cool yeah, well, yeah if yeah. you get down, if you ever get down to new orleans let me know it's it's a cool place you can easily spend a week in new orleans um and, mm -hmm. do, and do a lot of cool things yeah. do you have like a carnival or something or is that yeah. someplace else? yeah 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 new orleans has america's biggest uh carnival mardi gras yeah, so that is Louis. Oh, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, yeah we gotta go. We gotta yeah, go. Someday. We also have a really big uh, jazz festival. Um, it's yeah. not really, it's not really jazz anymore. It's like all kind all types of music. It's like two weekends. Um, it's it's kind of wild. There's a lot of music festivals. You know, lots of uh, lots of really good food and music in New Orleans. That's kind of what it's what it's known for. So, um, and it's known for the heat and humidity. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. not, yeah, our ready, ready not our favorites not our favorites yeah, we are <laughs> we are northern europe we we are never ready for that but we can yeah. uh we can pretend yeah you yeah, have I mean, air condition not. don't you oh yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i don't know how people lived here without it our it was 94 degrees yesterday yeah. um and my car thermometer said 111 you know because it had been sitting in the sun for a little yeah. while so um yeah yeah i don't yeah. you gotta have air conditioning here <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay do we want to go back and see that it's all working yeah. yes yes uh let's see this is this is the button so here we have the local and here we have cdn and it looks yeah. exactly the same awesome but one is generated on build and the other one is generated on demand awesome why don't you uh you should uh, open the pull request um mm -hmm. and then like i said i have a uh, test site and i'll i'll run through it and i can get this get this released and then we can you know kind of trumpet it on on twitter so that that anyone that's using this plugin uh knows that they could save a lot of time on their build now absolutely but we yeah. skipped a little bit we, sp we skipped some some use cases and i have not made tests yet but i'll create a pull request to like get it started yeah. but then um we need yeah, to I get don't, the I don't think client you... work done first and then it's summer vacay but i learned this terminology recreational coding so mm. we might be able yeah. to like complete it during some vacational recreational coding yeah sounds good <laughs> um, um. But let's, but should we do that now? Do people want to see how you make a pull request maybe? Yeah, okay. so. Oh, but, check it. It's, I normally just do it. Honestly, I normally do them on like on github.com. Yeah, yeah. Me, too. me too. I just need to make a, make a branch. I, I was mm -hmm. just on master here. So um, Gatsby CDN support, let's call it that. Gatsby CDN support. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the wrong directory. I was in the demo thing. Check out branch Gatsby CDN support. And then we can do, let's say, initial proof of concept work. Of concept work. Or commit. It's better than whip, right? <laughs> Work in progress. That's like my go-to. <laughs> That's my go-to one. Um, so I think I'm pushing this up to my fork. Uh, as people might see, it says uh, GitHub Ray plugin remote images pull new. Uh, but if we head on over to that link on the pull request, we'll see that it always automatically goes to the kind of upstream or original, um, original mm -hmm. repository. Yeah. So that is super annoying if you like. You didn't want to do that. You just want to work on your own repository. You have to like really make sure that. But this, in this case, we are trying to make a pull request towards this like official repository. Um, I did that back in the day, like yeah, a long time ago. Um, was a 
Gatsby Steam Jam with Jason Langstorff, and he had like this. I forked his thing, and then I made a pull request straight into his his thing, and I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> I did. I did that too, uh, and yeah. I've learned since that those should be template repositories on GitHub that they now have support for. But if you oh, fork okay. a template repository, you can't pull. You can't do a pull request back to the repository. So if you're not like looking for people to actually, you know, submit pull requests, so let's see. Add Gatsby and support. There we go. And then, I guess we'll convert it to a draft, so you don't think I'm done. Yeah, no problem. And then we can, we'll put some notes of like, uh, you know, I think making sure it works with different use cases and all that, but it's an awesome, awesome first start. Woo! Yay! We did it! <laughs> we did it! <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I thought that was super smooth. Yeah, it did. It went really nice. And um, I know you did that way faster than I would have done it because I have not actually, I, I know know other members on our team here i've added image cd and support to different cms plugins but mm -hmm. i haven't seen any of the prs or worked on it myself so i would have had to do a lot of uh learning uh to make this happen so thank you for picking up on it great uh, and thank you for coming on that it's been really We're not nice done so... yet. no but aren't we doing the summary <laughs> yes <laughs> i can still appreciate i can still be appreciative yeah, just, but I, just, I guess we have to close it soon because it's like an yeah, hour and 15 yeah, minutes yeah. so yeah, um yeah, but i guess yeah, you yeah. have your tasker beller led the beller yeah. the tasker beller i need to see i never remember these at the end it's the uh what we added um, or started adding Gatsby CDN support to Grace and Hicks is there. Um, Gatsby plugin remote images plugin, I guess. That's what we did. And the why. What? So um, folks using it can decide if they want to download the images locally as local files or if they want to use the images as remote files in the Gatsby supported by Gatsby CDN. So they defer the um, image transformations instead of doing the image transformations on build with Gatsby image CDN, you do them on demand. Or do you do them on demand? Cause I don't, like how does that actually work? Cause it um, should be an atomic build or do they do them af? I need to get into this more. But that was yeah, not the summary. I'm pretty, I'm pretty <laughs> sure they're. I'm pretty sure they're on demand. Yeah. Um, because because what they do, I think, is create a little serverless function that is deployed. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's something like that. And there, we have we have people here that I think would love to talk a little bit more about that. But I'm not one of those yeah. people. But yeah, it makes that double underscore Gatsby folder. You know, to mm -hmm. hold the images. And the big the biggest win with image CDN see that versus another image CDN, uh, like the one on Gatsby cloud versus not is you, the, you get the images on the same domain now. Yes. Right. So if it were using a CDN elsewhere, not that there aren't some awesome image CDNs out mm -hmm. there. Um, the benefit here is you don't have to connect to another domain, which is normally about three to three to 500 milliseconds worth of time for the user. So it's, it's nice that it's an image. Uh, it, the images are hosted at the same place where the site is built um, and hosted. So. And we actually, we talked to some some um, people who have a, a startup where it's really important, like privacy or I guess GDPR and kind of privacy is really important to them. And one of the things that they needed was to source all of the images um, into their Gatsby site because they didn't want to be talking to other domains because other domains could then be tracking their users. So it was really important for them to get all the images into their site. Um, so that is also another like use case for some some companies and some projects, that is also um, a great thing about having them on the same domain. But as we see, so this is the CDN one, and I'm trying to not ruin this, but it's underscore underscore Gatsby. It might be a little small for people to see. Um, so it's underscore here, Gatsby. And then the one from local are added to the static folder. So those are in the static folder. So that's the difference kind of between the two. Okay. Back to the the how, I guess. The how. 
So we had to do a couple of things. First off, we needed to create a uh, option so people can decide if they wanted CDN or local um, mode, I'll just call it mode. Um, and then we, where we would have done create remote file node, we check to see what kind of mode we're in. So if we're in CDN mode, we no longer download the files and uh, image files locally. We uh, create a new node that we decide what it's going to be, what type it's going to be. So we call it remote image file. And we make sure that it's valid or it has everything that the remote file from Gatsby as interface needs, because that's what's going to add the resolver for us. Um, and it needs a URL. It needs a file name, a height, a width, a MIME type. And since we just get the URLs, we don't know that height and the width um, and the MIME type. So we do a little bit of a probing at the URL to get those using a little um, package, a little NPM package there. Uh, and when we do this, we get a new node we get new nodes called remote image files that are then connected to our um, original nodes. But that doesn't give us the resolver. So to get the resolver, we need to say that our um, that our create schema, we need to say that our remote image file uh, is has the interface node, but also the remote file interface. And that is what's going to add the Gatsby uh, data or image data uh, resolver on there. Oh, yeah. And then in the connection between the two, we need to tell it if it the connection, if it's a remote image file or a local file. Boy, I need to write this up again in an email to remember. Oh, that was, that was <laughs> great. Great summary. And Ola, you need to do John's voice. Yeah. OK. OK. <laughs> OK. You must do something so I, my head will be in the. OK, there we go. That story tells a lot about you, Ura. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a Jason Leg store uh, pool request story. Again, I would, I would say it is. I would say it is. <laughs> great live video as usual. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Lilo, I guess no that's problem. it. So I'll make you guys big again. There we go. Up, 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 up. And then Grayson, it takes a while before we get to close down the stream. So we just wave and wave and wave and wave. I'm holding into that. Okay. <laughs> and then Ula says, he's first going to sing and then we're going to wave. Okay. 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 In two, three. We did the Gatsby plugin treasure hunt with plugin Queen Ray, and our guest is Grayson Hicks, Junior Devs, Lillian and Ura. Okay, bye everyone. That's awesome. Thank y'all. <laughs>